Hello, everyone. We respectfully acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which we do scouting. We'd like to pay respect to Elders past, present and emerging and extend our acknowledgement to any Indigenous people watching today. Thank you, Lawrence. Um, I'd like to welcome you all here this evening as we journey on our way to learn a bit more about Earth Tribe. And uh, before we do get started, I'd just like to introduce the team that are going to do all the hard work tonight. Um, so perhaps we'll start with Lawrence. Um, he's the uh, State Commissioner for Environment in Victoria. And thanks to Victoria, um, who are hosting our evening this evening. And um, we'll hear, he's our tech expert. So let's hope that everything goes well. Um, next, Simone. Simone is the State Commissioner for Environment in New South Wales. And uh, you'll be hearing all her ideas about how Earth Tribe can link with our Australian program. Uh, Jared McDonald is our uh, State Commissioner um, in Queensland. So it's still quite early up there in comparison to um, some of us. And uh, he'll be talking to us about the, the pathway to get to um, Earth Tribe, where we've come from to get to Earth Tribe. And uh, Jack, um, Jack's all the way over in Western Australia and our State um, or our branch leader over there for environment um, and he'll be talking about some examples of how you can implement um, some Earth Tribe challenges and Jim who's not showing us how his face but a nice little logo there. Jim's in the Australian Capital Territory and he's going to tell us um, a bit about some of the work he's been doing with the um, Scouts Go Solar Badge. So um, with that, I'll hand over to Jared, who's going to start our program. Thank you. Well, good evening. Um, so starting us off, we are working into the Welcome to the New Earth Tribe. So... We're going to do just a quick run through introducing Earth Tribe, how how does it map to the current program, and examples of how it could run within a unit. Okay, so a, br a brief history of the environment in education. Scanning has, been, has come a long way since um, BP's last message where he stated nature study will show us how full of beautiful and wonderful things God has made the world for you and try to leave the world a little better than when you found it. Religious beliefs aside, he was a big believer in, in understanding how the, how the environment works and the world around us. And he made sure that education was a key point for every scout's journey. In 1997, the World Conservation Badge was launched and as a uh, wasn't program, which allowed youth to go out and develop an understanding of the world around them. Uh, everyone will re remember the affectionate panda that went with it. Uh, we then progressed on to, in 2009, to the World Scout Environment Program. And so we uh, continued on the path with WASM for that, which is now the uh, program that we do today. And then as of this year, Australia has adopted the new Earth Tribe Program, which WASM brought around again. Uh, with, the, with the badge, it's all come back with our connection with the World Wildlife Fund, and as such, that is why we now have our panda back. So why the change? Well, environment practices, even the last 10 years, have uh, changed massively in the way things are done, and even since our World Environment Program was launched. 
since there, we've had lots of young people stepping up. Figures like uh, Greta Thunberg, Isra Hirsi are all being making changes, uh, dramatic calls for change. And not to mention even our, even some of our Australian school kids going out and doing the strikes for climate change. Even from uh, a scientific level, simple things like going from the term global warming to climate change. These are all now being taught at school, whereas back in the old days, global warming was always the focus. Our badge work needs to keep up to date, be relevant if we are going to be the progressive uh, organisation that we try to be. Okay, so the World Scout, so the new program, Earth Tribe, is falling under the Better World Framework. So part of that, part of that is continuing to work on the sustainable de development goals that we we follow under the UN framework, and um, doing that. We have developed, WASM has developed six badges to go with it. So everyone should recognize the messages of peace and the World Scout Environment Badge. Uh, Earth Tribe is the new one that we're talking about today. But some of the other ones that um, are always worth noting is the Dialogue for, for Peace, uh, which I think should be pretty self-explanatory. He for She, um, which is about developing an equal understanding for any and all individuals, no matter who they are. And uh, some might not know, but the Patrimontio badge, which is specifically focused on the preservation of world heritage sites. Okay, so the framework. Um, basically, it's designed so that a young person will get to know the Earth Tribe. So starting off, the first point is an introduction to the Earth Tribe um, and the different paths that can be taken. Uh, the, the, the youth member will be able to select a path um, that they will take. The, the four options that they can take are the better choices, nature and biodiversity, clean energy, and healthy planet. Now, part of this is, especially with the new program, it's all about the young person's choice. And helping that we have an, uh, we'll have an adult coming up with a discussion with them and forming a mutual agreement on the steps that they want to use to complete the challenge. Um, so they will come up with how they're going to uh, complete their community projects and um, also what complementary actions will they do for their Earth Tribe recognition. Now they can choose to focus on three badge areas, the plastic tide turners, the uh, Scout so Go Solar, and of course, our Champions for Nature. Specifically, you'll see that the, um, the sections have been broken up to focus on each of them. Um, so the the clean energy one is is one that's focused on in the Scouts Go Solar. Uh, healthy Planet is is focused on in the Plastic Tide Turners, and your better choices in nature and diversity are all focused on the Champions for Nature badge. So once a once a young young person and adult have agreed on their journey. They've then got to carry on the actions that they've agreed to. They've got to complete their challenges. And once they've done that, they can actually share those on the SDG, SDG Hub and Scouts.org. And so they can get those recorded on there as well. With the completion, the adult, lay, the adult leader will present the Earth Tribe pin and will celebrate the, the young member with the ceremony, um, usually I'd say you'd be doing it as part of um, your end parade, and um, with that, be presenting the uh, Earth Tribe pen and certificate. This person will become a recognised member of the Earth Tribe. 
Now, that's not to say once they've finished one badge that they can't go back and do others. And, you know, their goal will hopefully be to complete the other two challenges as well. Uh, this challenge also repeats depending on the sections. So it's being split up so that it is Joeys and Cubs, uh, Scouts, and then Senior Scouts, so your Venturers and your Rovers together. So this, bay, this, this set pathway can be repeated three times. Okay. So the, the the basic learning process for the Earth Tribe is broken up into three parts. Be aware. So they are they are learning about a topic. They're starting to understand different issues. Uh, case in point, with the Scouts Go Solar. Uh, they learn about solar energy, and so how is it produced? How is the sun? Um, how does the sun provide the energy? They start to learn some of those topics. Um, they then start working to on the second part, which is cooperate. So they start identifying some of the needs of the community and work with others to create some sustainable solutions. So some of these things can be. Um, developing solar cookers and, and understanding how some of this machinery works. They, they then work on the act part. So they can, um, they take action to contribute to solving a specific issue related to uh, better, better choices and biodiversity while working with members of the community, um, other groups and partners. Uh, a good one with this is the, um, the plastic tide turners. So one of the, the one, key way of going through this would be um, they learn about the problem of plastics. Uh, they, they take an audit. They look at how their issues and what things that they have going on, you know, how they can, how, how, they've, uh, how they're contributing to the problem. And then with the, com the cooperate, they look at how they can reduce their impact. And then one of the things that they can do with the act is, we can introduce things like um, Clean Up Australia Day. They can be, then that could be part of their project is putting in a lot of that part. So they can they can do their scouts. They can do their Clean Up Australia Day as part of their action to complete the badge. Okay, so quick rundown with the be aware. You complete each of the following steps, and this runs for all three of them. The first one is be aware, complete the following steps. A, a self-assessment of your knowledge, the challenge that you've in the challenge you've chosen. So this is talking about this is talking about um, where, especially with the tide turners, where you fit in, um, how much rubbish does your family produce? How much stuff can be recycled? You go and do an assessment of where, what your current level's at. Um, there, there are specific activities that have been set out for each of these um, badges. So if you have a look on the implementation guides manuals they they do actually specifically give you activities for each of these that can help you with this part and the big thing is they then will decide on a path that they will use to complete their project so thinking about the impact they they've made they can think of something that they want to focus on Okay, so you'll see each section is being broken up to focus on each section. So they do a self-assessment based on their level. So the first one you've got here is 7 to 10. I know that I can live a healthy, I can live healthy, healthily, and how to reduce my impact on the environment. Now, they give themselves a tick. They say where they think they're at. So they can say, I am at the beginning of my exploration, I am on my exploration, 
or I have finished my exploration. So some some of them will have a understanding, a, a good understanding before they start, and so they'll give themselves a tick of where they think they they are on this. So second one, I reduce my personal wants in light of the needs of natural of in light of the needs of the natural world and other people and future generations. So they give themselves a journey. Uh, key point they might say i i make sure that i always turn off all the electricity when i'm not using it simple things like that they could say that for that they can say i'm on my exploration and i use my i use every opportunity for pro environmental behavior so again if they're doing the tide turners they might say well you know if i see there's some rubbish around i'll make a t- conscious effort to clean it up and uh, so they might say then I'm on my exploration. So they then per- choose a personal goal. So they choose an issue that they want to work on for the topic and they can focus on that. So with the plastic tide turners, they may just focus on one specific piece of rubbish as a focus. Um, soft plastics, they could do um, water bottles. And with water bottles, they could come up with a goal of how can they positively you know improve water bottle use and then they come up with some activities for this so case in point with that i'm going to use my water bottle regularly repeatedly i'm not going to buy a new new bottle of water every time i want water Okay, so the big thing that you should see with the implementation plan is they've all been designed that you have the activities that you want, that you need to do, how you can run the program, and basically what age is their best suited for. The big thing is there's a lot of freedom with this, and you can focus on a specific topic depending on where you are. So if you live in the middle of regional Queensland, you could focus on some of the effects of mining. Or if you're on the coast, you could you can focus on a lot of the impacts for, on, in rivers and um, on the reef. There's, the world is the oyster with this. And basically, as, as long as you're linking in those initial, the initial guide, where you can go with it <clears throat> is up to you. The, the thing you'll notice is as you move along up your age levels, there's a progression. And what they're expected to be able to do depends on their age level. Okay, so second one's cooperate. So that's the identifying the issues and needs in the community, exploring solutions together. So one of the best things to do with this is to work with, is get the youth members to work with the rest of the group, with the unit. They can come up with ideas together for their tasks. And especially if you're gonna, do, if you're gonna make a larger activity, um, it makes it it'll make a bigger contribution if if they're working together to come up with what they want to do as a group um again some of the big big easy ones to work with would be your um is with your um clean up australia day and uh earth hour you can link some of your ideas with that Okay, the last part is, of course, the act. So that's the part where you come up with your agreed actions and you do it. Now, the big key thing with Scouts is plan, do, review. So the last part is once you've done your actions, you go and assess it. How did you go? What would you do better next time? How how could we do this next time? And um, 
the key part there is take what you've done and report it on the sgd.org. So you can share what you've done. And especially if you've got some uh, suggestions, that would be a great place to put it on there because then somebody else might see that and think it's a great idea and want to follow suit. So they might, and if you've got that little extra tip, that might just be the extra piece that they need to help them go. Hi guys, I'm Simone and as uh, Annette mentioned earlier, I'm the New South Wales Commissioner for Environment. Uh, we've just realised we've been having some technical issues today with the comments in the live stream. So what we're going to ask you to do instead, if you've got a question for us, uh, go to the website and if you can put it uh, up on the screen, slido.com, uh, and enter the code hashtag EarthTribe2021. Uh, we'll be able to listen to and ask, answer a couple of your questions through there instead. So we're really sorry that that uh, comments function isn't working for us tonight. But if you go to slido.com, we'll still be able to answer your questions. So uh, we all know that scouting happens at a local level. We're all leaders ourselves. Uh, and so we want to make sure that it's really, really clear what badge work in the Scouts Australia program all of our youth members can sign off by taking part of uh, taking part in Earth Tribe because ultimately it all fits over a few program areas and it can be quite confusing when you're trying to come up with it yourself. So we want to make it as easy as we can. Unfortunately, as I said, this all covers a few different program areas. So it's not as straightforward as saying all of this fits as a challenge area or all of this fits as a special interest area. I'm going to try really hard to explain it to you now, but Keep the questions coming. Um, if you still have more questions after this, and we'll have a bit of a question and answer time as well. If you've got more questions, reach out to your branch uh, or international uh, or environment team members. We're all there to be able to help you get through this. So a couple of things first, all of the language that I'm going to be using in the next couple of slides, not quite yet, Lawrence. All of the next couple of things are going to be in the new youth program language. Um, and we know that there are some team members that are around that haven't quite transitioned, in particular for our Victorian friends uh, and the remainder of our New South Wales friends. Um, your state and your region teams are very aware of that uh, and they're going to be helping you transition over the coming months so that you can get used to the program. Uh, and once again, I really encourage you to ask any questions that you like. Uh, there's really no such thing as a, a stupid question here. We're all here to, to help you support and understand this. Uh, I would just ask you to keep to the, the scout law and promise, keep it polite, keep it friendly with, with all of us. Uh, so what's going through uh, is roughly how this all relates to our youth program here in Scouts Australia. So this is just a bit of a summary for some of us because not everyone's across all of the areas of the program. That's totally okay. This is just a bit of a reminder for some of us that are on the program or for those of us who don't know quite yet how these different bits work. So on the one hand, we have our challenge areas. You'll also hear them referred to as our milestones. So these are a part of our program essentials of the new youth program. So they're the base camp of our achievement pathways. By actively participating in a weekly program through these challenge areas, a youth member is going to achieve the program essentials of scouting and take away the skills that we expect out of the educational objectives of scouting. So consisting of four basic challenge areas, um, we use these to ensure that our units, units are balancing their program between creative, outdoor, personal growth and community activities on an equal basis. Uh, it's up to the unit to set which challenge area is most relevant to a particular activity. Each scout member's journey is broken up into three milestones based on their age and their progression through the challenge areas. To complete a milestone, a youth member must participate, assist or lead in 26 activities from each area. On the other hand, on the right of our table here, we have our special interest areas, which fit under the achievement pathways. And they're not mandatory for a scout to complete, but we totally encourage them to do it because some of the special interest projects are absolutely fabulous. Uh, but they don't have to unless they're pursuing their peak award. 
These are much more aimed at learning basic skills around project management, in particular around goal setting. Uh, so we have six special interest areas, including STEM and innovation, growth and development, environment, creating a better world, arts and literature, and adventure and sport. Um, so these all require a youth member to set a personal goal, as well as to complete the steps to achieve that goal. When they then complete that uh, project, they are then presented with the uh, award after it being reviewed and approved by their unit council. So Jared outlined the basic steps of progression through the Earth Tribe learning process. Uh, and you'll see on this slide here, what we've done is we've kind of aligned each of those different steps as much as we can with one of those areas. So you can see that when we start by becoming aware, where we complete a reflection, then a series of activities, uh, this one fits under our challenge areas and our milestones. The areas under Corporate and Act, however, where we're starting to look at planning and completing a project with our own goals, starts to fit more under the goal setting of a special interest area. But if our youth members just participating there, totally fits as more of a challenge area. So you've seen this slide already, I'm going to be putting more of a Scouts Australia spin on this one. So uh, step one, be aware, as I said, this fits into our challenge areas. So in this first step, a youth member completes all of the things from A to B and C, uh, which includes a self-assessment of knowledge, completion of the activities from the action kit, and a review of these activities before they select a topic they want to explore further. So once again, we start off by having a look at this self-assessment of knowledge and the youth member ranking themselves where they fit along the spectrum, whether they're just starting out or whether they've finished their exploration. Also gives them a chance to log any activities they've completed or any topics that they're particularly drawn to during the process of doing those activities. Once again, we then see our activities. Uh, and as you can see, these are really specific, specific activities. Uh, so I've actually pulled these pictures straight out of the action kit that we've been provided. And as you can see, the youth members are given everything to do. So they're given the time it's going to take. They're given the instructions. So it's not really goal setting for themselves. So they're, they're completing these as challenge area activities. It's up to the unit council and the individual to determine how many challenge areas they fit with each activity. For the situation of a, a new Joey who's just come into the movement, each activity to they complete along the Earth Tribe path could potentially be their own uh, challenge area being marked off. Whereas if you've got a 25 year old rover who's been in the movement most of the life, you'd probably expect them to do all of these activities to have a single progression for the milestone. That's all up to the unit council because they're the ones that know the unit member the best. Uh, so when we're reviewing our activities, something we're all really familiar with already under the new program. It's nothing new. Uh, so we already do a standard plan during the review with our uh, current challenge areas. There's no difference here because they're just doing the same process. Um, remembering that we program against the challenge areas and we review against the spices. Only difference is that our youth members need to be able to pick a topic for the next step. So it's worth as an adult leader considering asking questions in that review that relate to what did you find more interesting for a youth member, for a younger member, or for someone that's a bit older, maybe starting to ask them questions about what topics have concerned them the most. Uh, so once again, moving on to the next step down the path, uh, we're starting to move along to our challenge areas. Uh, from our challenge areas to where we're starting to look at our project planning. Uh, so under this second step of cooperate, it's all about designing our project along with a unit or a project patrol, taking into account all of the different personal goals and what each individual wants out of the project. In this step, our youth members have to decide if they want to complete this as a special interest area 
or if they want to complete this as a challenge area. If they want to complete this, their project as a special interest area, they have to set their own specific goals uh, and the specific steps they've defined to take them. Uh, if multiple unit members want to complete an SIEA in the same project, they each need to complete the project and there has to be enough to do to challenge them individually. So for older sections, it may be a little bit harder to do multiple special interest areas. On the other hand, if the youth member wants to just support another team member, but doesn't want to complete their own special interest area project, they can complete it as a challenge area, as a participate, assist or a lead, depending on what input they have. Uh, and again, any youth member that wants to do this project as a special interest area just needs to make sure they do the things appropriately. So any templates have to be used, any timeframes and the unit council approvals have to be met at this point. Uh, so one of the really big reasons that we do it here is because the project planning steps are really important in that special interest area. We have to, again, be making sure that the goal has been set correctly. We have to be making sure that the time frame is met and we have to make sure the appropriate move approvals have gone through. And a lot of that is why we wouldn't often encourage a lot of unit members to be doing the exact same project. So very rarely would it be uh, the right thing for all of the unit members to do the same special interest area project. And there's a lot of questions about why we've included this as an option because it does make it more complex. However, we don't want any of our youth members to disengage purely because they're being told to do something they don't want to do. We all know youth do it. Uh, I did it the same as I was a youth member. Uh, so there's a whole range of reasons they might not want to do a special interest project. They could be disinterested in the peak award system. They could have already done all of their special interest area projects. Uh, they could just be unwilling to fulfill the time frame of a potentially 15 plus hours of a project, or they could just not be ready to do the project yet. And I've just been advised that our chat is now back up and running in the system. So you should be able to uh, contact the team directly. Uh, so if the youth member identifies under step one, uh, step two, cooperate, that they want to complete the project as a special interest area, they complete the project uh, by obtaining the approval for the project through the unit council, by completing the project actions they've agreed on, and then reporting back to the unit council on the project to be completed, uh, and then by sharing that project with the SDG Help. That is as simple as sending an email with a report to the Scouts Australia team, and they'll then share that to the right place. If the youth member decides they want to do it as a uh, challenge area, they complete it this way, and all they have to do is complete it as a participate, assist, or a lead, and report back to the unit council once again to let them know they've completed that. Now, I think we will uh, open up some of the uh, questions here. I'm just bringing up some details on here uh, and I can see some of them have already been asked uh, and answered already. Uh, so uh, Lawrence here is our State Commissioner for Victoria uh, and he's just put his email address in the chat for you to be able to access that. Um, is the badge work able to be linked to milestones and SIA? So we would own not have them uh, so i'll try that sentence again so with our badge work we can only complete one section of the scouts australia badge work for each section so you can complete one of the sections as a challenge area or you can complete one of the sections as a special interest area you wouldn't be able to do something like the project you wouldn't be able to do that as both parts it can only be one or the other And I will now hand over, I think, to Jack is up next. Hey guys, I'm Jack, the Branch Commissioner for Environment Sustainability in Western Australia. I'm going to talk to you guys about how you run this program inside your unit. 
So I'm going to be focusing this one on the Titanus Plastic Challenge. So this is an example program of Titanus Plastic. So we've got First Avengers Cup unit. They've decided they want to be involved in Earth Tribe at their unit council meeting. They are Cub Scout units, so they're 7 to 10 age range. They need to complete five different activities, do a self-assessment and a plastic audit. They plan to run this over two to three nights of their Cub Scout meeting. And two Cub Scouts have indicated they would like to take a lead in this role. So first week will be be aware. So you're going to complete three different activities, part of their one and a half hour program. The first activity you can get involved in is plastic resolution, which is in the Earth Tribe Action Kit, which you can find on the Scouts Australian website. The second activity for the night is Ops, Ops Recycling Art, which is a part of the Earth Tribe Action Kit as well. And finally, to finish their night, we're going to get a resource off Scout Central called Rubbish Relay. Before we finish the night, we're going to do a bit of a review, ask them what they've learnt and what they found interesting during the night. Jane Smith run the Plastic Resolution Activity, so if they're going to get a lead, her brother John got assist, and they've got that marked off in their award badges. And all the other Cub Scouts that were present on the night got a participant in their milestones. So week two now. So they're going to play two more activities part of the five different activities required in their hour and a half session. So the first activity they're going to, have to start with is a plastic audit, which is one of the mandatory activities part of Earth Tribe, and the particularly plastic Titanus. Once they've done that, they're going to review the recycling systems at their hall using the Scouts Australian checklist which you can find on the Scouts Australian, Scouts Australian website. Each unit member writes on a piece of paper a topic area they are interested in, and they're going to get their group together. This pro these then get put into project patrols, and they're going to work together, design a project plan for their topic of interest. So project one is going to do Clean Up Australia Day, which is coming up soon. So they decided they all want to be involved in it. They need to clean up on Australian Day at their local campsite. All team members wants to complete the project as a challenge area. So they're going to choose that as their particular way, pathway. Steve Rogers offers to assist his cub leader in organising of the activity. So he's awarded as an assist in his milestone. All the other team members of the patrol is awarded a participant. And the second patrol decided to do recycling of waste. And they're going to do waste community awareness around recycling and earning towards collection in New South Wales. Tony decides that he would like to complete the project as a special interest area. It tells his patrol that he would like to design some posters and put them up in the community as arts and literature SIA badge. The rest of the patrol would like to put the posters up in their neighbourhood as well. And they help by collecting the counting the cans together. All right, we've all rejoined. Hello. <laughs> um, are we going to hear from Jim first, maybe? Before we yep. just, um, there aren't too many questions there. 
in Slido or in um, stream, stream Yard. So um, maybe we'll hear about the Scouts Go Solar Badge, if Jim's ready to do that. Certainly. So I'll just uh, share my screen. I've got the uh, droplet into PowerPoints before. So uh, happy for that, uh, Lawrence. Go for it. All right. Let's see if this works. All right, is that up and live? All right, so uh, good evening, all. Um, yeah, along the same lines um, as as um, was just described by Jack uh, for the um, plastic tide turners. Looking at Scouts Go Solar, but uh, in the ACT, we've had a number of um, activities and events uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, so a little bit of a, a picture picture show showing um, where this can. Um, where this can go for people and so the first time uh we really dropped some scale scale solar activities this is as simple as it can be uh, pringles jar cut open uh, and making s'mores uh, in the sun uh, so solar s'mores for one of the better sprays um, on this day it was the uh, queen's birthday long weekend in june uh, so it was six degrees uh, out in the uh, at the scout campground in the ACT at Camp Cottermouth, uh, and we had chocolate melting, or better still, the venturers had chocolate melting uh, in 13 minutes. Uh, so, yeah, I guess the the big takeaway for this is no matter what time of uh, year it is, uh, even in a you know 60 degree day, you can still do these scouts go solar activities. Um, and if chocolate's involved in marshmallows, then uh, everybody's a winner. Moving on um, uh, and uh, working across different sections, uh, in 2019, we ran a, a bit of a Scouts Go Solar demonstration site uh, for uh, scouting participants who came out to Camp Cuttermouth to participate in, in JOTA activities. Uh, so really giving um, all, all sections something extra to do uh, along with their, their time on the radio and the uh, other radio activities. Um, so as a demonstration site, range of activities there. Uh, for the Cubs and Joeys, we had the solar art. Um, the aim was to set up some dinosaurs on the on the tables um, and uh, uh, essentially use the shadow drawing of the dinosaurs uh, that we had there. Um, but uh, being an outside activity, we had uh, horrendous winds ripping in from the west. Uh, so it was a little bit cool and nothing would stay flat on the table if we tried. Uh, so we just converted that activity to trying to do some finger art. Um, I think that was meant to have been a wolf um, uh, there, and uh, yeah, some turned out really good. We also had this as youth leading, uh, so I guess Sci Scouts uh, as an ACT initiative um, in the STEM space and environment work pretty closely together. Uh, and and various Scouts, Venturers, and Rovers have been involved with that. Uh, to make it a really energised program. So in this case, young uh, scouts stepped up to actually lead um, the other scouts in, in the solar art for scouts and venturers, uh, which was, uh, as you can see by the magnifying glasses, bits of wood there uh, and, um, and uh, what do you call it, UV rated sunglasses for eye protection, uh, was for a bit of wood art. Um, this patrol came through, highly energised, uh, I should say 15, or 14 year olds um, and it was an absolute pleasure uh, seeing them pick it up and run with it uh, so this solar art using the magnifiers soon turned into solar cooking by uh, by way of uh, s'mores leftovers uh, which was cool too because it um, just showed the adaptability of the uh, of the equipment uh, to the activity as part of the solar art uh, it was drawing some uh, designs um, <coughs> Um, on the piece of wood uh, and then burning it with these magnifying glasses uh, to the best ability that we could. So, yeah, having, you know, people hadn't tried this before, uh, you know, I guess we've, I've been doing the plan do review before it was cool and part of the uh, new program um, that, you know, we had, the, as you can see there, some pretty crap off cuts of uh, plywood, uh, which wasn't overly helpful uh, either. But, 
the end result was pretty awesome. You know, this uh, scout had never done that before. They drew the design off memory and burnt it with a, a bit of a, a chunky magnifying glass. So in terms of demonstration site, um, uh, you know, youth members got seriously involved. You can see on the right side of that picture there uh, and at the top, other scouts there burning their designs um, to the best they could. Uh, but also leaders were just as hands-on. So we accommodated for everybody, nobody missed out, and everybody had a great day despite the wind making things hard for various activities. The next one, a demonstration which generated a lot of interest and, and discussion and ongoing sort of thing, um, uh, was the impact of colour. Uh, as part of you know, or impact of the sun on, on colour uh, with the thought that what clothes do you wear when you're doing scouting activities out in the bush uh, and all this was was a glass jar, tin lid uh, with water tipped in there at the start of the day uh, and every half hour, every rotation that came through just measuring the temperature of the water by the data loggers uh, and, and just seeing over the day which one um, uh, which which temperature uh, actually heated up more, which stayed coolest, uh, and the results, which I didn't get a, a, a photograph of, unfortunately, uh, were actually quite surprising and not what you'd think. So as discussed uh, previously as part of the program, if uh, scouts are looking at doing a, I say scouts, any, any section, uh, everyone's a scout, um, are looking at doing their STEM SIO badge, uh, it might be, uh, associated with this, they might want to look at the data over a longer period of time and analyse that. Uh, so these activities actually lend themselves really well to, to project-based uh, outcomes and, and uh, activities. Moving on. Um, so yeah, sorry, back to that 2019. Um, we didn't, it was so busy. We had uh, a couple hundred kids come through uh, as part of the Jota Day weekend out at, at uh, Cottermouth. Uh, and as a demonstration site, um, didn't think it would be so popular and had a few scheduling issues with uh, people not following plans. Uh, so I missed a few photos there, unfortunately. Um, but moving on, uh, we picked up some photos uh, as part of this. Before COVID struck, uh, we snuck in a bit of a science of the outdoors camp uh, in the ACT for essentially a activity troop, activity unit of... Um, uh, really energised and interested scouts. Um, you know, as part of that, had the, the privilege of supporting them uh, with their lunchtime cooking through the use of solar ovens. Uh, trying to grab a great picture of it, but uh, as you can see, the solar oven in the bottom right and also in the centre top sort of thing, the little green things, is really nothing more than um, uh, one of those we, uh, uh, sun shields that people put on their front windows of, uh, of cars, albeit commercially produced, in this case, to have a, a zipped-in uh, plastic cover, um, which is just totally amazing. Uh, and the temperatures, which you'll see soon, uh, that get in there, um, can, you know, as long as you've got uh, sun, uh, less wind, you can cook some amazing things. Pizza, uh, that was lunch, that was a winner. Unfortunately, the cloud came over, the wind picked up, and no matter what we could do, you got a slight melt on the on the cheese and um, yeah I think we made a decision with the scouts um, to eat before anything started growing on that food that uh, might have caused problems for us so summertime uh, it, this would be great um, uh, yeah March cloudy it was just poor conditions once again so we could do our best moving on a different uh, solar oven concept in that it's a evacuated tube essentially with the as you can see on the left just the solar wings pointing the reflecting the sun straight down to the tube uh, this is the solar scone uh, herb, and, herb and garlic uh, scones and probably the best scones i have ever had in my life um, uh, they were crunchy on the outside moist on the middle Nice and fluffy, uh, a double butter in there, and they with a cup of tea, just perfect. Um, so obviously you can adapt that uh, to dietary requirements. These are gluten free, uh, so we cover it off on that, um, uh, and just a pretty basic uh, recipe there, and 35 minutes to perfection. 
integrating this, as I mentioned, with the uh, with the SIA, especially in the STEM space, if, if uh, youth members want to look at uh, the data behind this, um, I kept a logbook while the scouts were doing this of the temperature as, as things went. Um, I think this logbook I put here might have been the afternoon when we did the uh, apple foil, uh, sorry, an apple in foil. Uh, it was a sliced up apple in foil, roughly cut up, and um, what was that? 355 to um, yeah, 430, so half an hour. And this apple was like the best baked apple you could get. Um, with temperatures up to 110 in the cloud in the afternoon in March, um, that dropping, obviously seeing the impact of, of the environment on um, uh, on your oven. Uh, so opportunities exist there for uh, youth members to do something like that uh, along the way. I guess the, uh, yeah, it's limited by the imagination. One of the other parts of Scoutsco Solar is the solar stills uh, or transpiration bags um, as per this photo. Uh, just looking at ways of extracting water. Obviously it's driven by the sun um, and you know, the, the, the you know, problems of the, the inland environments uh, around the ACT that uh, vegetation is adapted to really hot summers, hot dry summers and really cold winters. So they're not going to give up much water. Uh, as, as the scouts found out uh, uh, in 2020. Um, so that was one of the acacia species. Uh, some of the scouts had some droplets. The one scout in the centre there, uh, she's almost got a handful of water, uh, and some came off these leathery leaves of uh, some of the box trees that we've got out at the campsite. Uh, some of the scouts took the uh, transpiration water quite well, thought it was nice. Uh, others thought the eucalypt resin in there was way too much for them. Uh, so as part of a learning experience and also links potentially into the OA yes, um, outdoor adventure skills uh, for sourcing water uh, in multiple different ways uh, in survival situations and the like. The solar still by digging into the soil, uh, either putting you know, green leaves in there or just seeing what's in the soil. Um, once again, the uh, Canberra soil was a little bit uh, challenging in that we don't have much, much moisture there. so. Uh, the darker soil and the, the hole to the right there, we uh, to give the scouts an outcome, we might have supported the uh, soil in being a bit wetter uh, as part of making the, the still uh, functional. Obviously, the uh, other impacts in the shade uh, may be less functional and effective uh, than it would have been if it was in the fully sunny spot. <clears throat> so... A lot of uh, yeah opportunities. Scouts go solar. One of the three Earth Tribe, um, I guess, badge streams. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll uh, stop sharing the screen and go on back to the uh, the centre. Awesome. Welcome Thanks. back, everyone. <laughs> Um, do we want the questions? I mean, there's really only two burning questions that I can see. Um, one is, will we share our slides? And the second one is about five-year-old Joey's and the fact that there was a program, which is something we have discussed, I know, as a team. Um, and our Better World Framework Coordinator has some thoughts about that. She's unfortunately unable to be with us tonight. Um, but Simone, do you want to mention something about Joey's particularly? Yeah, so it's we are working on uh, getting some documentation, especially in relation to Joey, because we know it can be hard with WASM programs because they don't recognise five-year-old scouts. Their ages start at seven, so they start at cub age. So we are looking at including some specific documentation on how to, to run this with a, a Joey mob. However, um, it didn't really get reflected in, in our presentation, but the actually the all the activities that have been provided to us by WASM, they're all just guidelines. So they're just some sample activities. If we have uh, activities that are being run through our Joey mobs, through our cub packs, any activities that aren't necessarily into the action kit, you can continue to run those with your, with your Joeys as long as they fit into one of the, the four streams. So if, if you're running an activity already uh, where you're taking your youth members out perhaps through the 
on a, a nature walk through your, your local council. Uh, even though that's not a part of the, the action kit, that is certainly an activity that you can still keep running with your jellies uh, under that nature and biodiversity path. Uh, and we are looking, as I said, to get some more specifics out in relation to how the joeys run things. Uh, but in terms of the number of activities they have to complete, it would be along the lines of the, the cup. So, for instance, with the plastic um, uh, plastic tide turners challenge, sorry, I had a, a mental blank there. With the plastic tide turners challenge, we'd be looking at joeys to be completing five activities, uh, in one of those being that plastic audit that's in the, the action kit. So it, it is definitely possible um it's just not officially in the documentation just reminding everyone you can um drop your questions in the chat now now's a great opportunity to um ask us anything before we finish up um, just, uh, yeah just uh picking up on one there about the uh, other than the action kit do you have any other tips that uh uh, you can relate to your regular scouting activities, uh, especially the Scouts Go Solar. Um, I guess that's one thing that we, uh, uh, there's some ideas in the uh, solar handbook um, that came out from Scouts Go Solar uh, and some, some pretty, uh, some very good activities that go into weekly activities or on camps as well. Uh, I guess it extends from uh, things like the, the um, uh, you know, pizza box style of ovens with foil pizza boxes or any cardboard box. Um, through to setting up, uh, yeah, it might be a, a venturer or scout who's passionate about the environment and solar, uh, setting up a, a solar battery or battery and um, solar panel setup. Um, so some groups have got that set up for their camp lighting. Um, so it might make for a good project um, uh, in, in that space as well. So, so some of the ones that we've uh, come up with, um, Going going on the Scouts Go Solar is um, we we've uh, done a lot of work with um, solar races and so some of the activities probably doesn't work so well at, if uh, you, you're doing it during the night but we um, we buy you can buy a lot of um, the solar races or you know make it yourself um, solar races or things like eBay and they're usually about two dollars so usually we get the um, Scouts to uh, to buy some of them and um then you can apply a bit more stem to it so some of the things that we've done is a bit of um using uh using mirrors to do um reflection and refraction on it to see how they um can speed up races and then we set up little obstacle courses so using boxes and stuff that they have to find a way to to break it around so you can add a little bit of um, problem solving in there as well um one of the ones that we've also looked at with the um, the tide turners is uh, we we get the kids to do a do a um, a collection of rubbish in an area and then we get them to sort them out into you know where where it can fit in and what can be recycled and what can't be and um, we did a bit of a um, a program where we set it up so that. If, if we didn't know where, we got them to research and find out where some things are available. And uh, for the Scouts Go Green, we, we actually modified that. So we had 25 different items and had two items that specifically weren't recyclable, but they had to figure out which ones they were. For, for reference, it was the, uh, the plastic straw and, and the baby diaper. Oh, good. Uh, we do have a list of frequently asked questions that we've prepared that I will email to everyone uh, after the uh, session. Um, are we going to share our presentation? Maybe you can think about that and uh, we'll respond to that person. I don't know. So we'll definitely try making the recording uh, available after the session. We've just got to actually find out technically how to do it. Uh, but we do intend to make this recording uh, available after the session. Uh, and we will certainly be sending this out to the uh, state representatives. I'm hoping that we can then work with those to send them out throughout our state. Um, uh, and I believe Annette's email address will be coming up at the end. So if you want to grab Annette's email address, uh, she can also send a copy of that through to you directly. Um, 
So that's that's an email address. Uh, she's our national commissioner. Uh, sorry, our national advisor for environment. Uh, so she can definitely send through uh, the information, or at least put you in touch with the the state representative if we're not able to share the document. Um, and yep. I believe after um, this webinar, if you actually come back to this link. Um, that you would have gotten, you know, in the email or in any communications. If you come to this link on YouTube again, hopefully the recording will be right here waiting for you. So if you need to go back and review something um, that you might have missed during this webinar, you can. Another piece of information that um, Lawrence did put up before, uh, and you can see in the, the comments there, there is the information. If you go to the Scouts Australia website, there is a page that's dedicated to Earth Tribe. Over the next couple of uh, weeks and months, as more information comes through, and as we finish off some of these resources, we'll be uploading a lot more information. So we'll be uploading some of those FAQs. We'll be uploading some specific requirements around Scouts Australia so that all of this information that's kind of been thrown at you tonight will all just be available in a, a nice, easy uh, one-page document that we can send out to everyone. So keep checking in on the, the Earth page as well as reaching out to your, your state and national representatives and we'll be able to, to help you with any, any follow -up queries you have. All right. So I think we can finish up. <laughs> <laughs> Any further questions? Um, you're very welcome to email Annette. Her uh, email is, address is uh, on the screen now. And if they're state specific, she can also forward them on to us, um, your state representatives. Thank you, everyone, for attending tonight. Thank you. See you later. Bye, everyone.